In this JavaView online training video, I will discuss the annotation rows that are located below the sequence alignment. Annotations and features provide additional information that is overlaid onto the sequences and the alignment. When JavaView opens an alignment, the conservation, consensus and quality annotations are automatically calculated. They are displayed as quantitative histograms. These annotations are associated with the columns in the alignment, thus reflecting the properties of the alignment as a whole. They are dynamic. If the alignment changes, then the annotation rows automatically recalculate. In contrast, the features are associated with the sequence residues. They are mapped onto specific residues. If the alignment changes, the features move with the residue. We have another video that discusses viewing features in JavaView. The link is in the text below. For large alignments, the annotation calculation may slow down the program. This can be turned off by going to the Calculate drop-down menu and toggle the Auto Calculate Consensus option off. All annotation rows can be hidden by going to the Annotation drop-down menu and toggle Show Annotation Options off. Individual annotations can be hidden or deleted. By placing the cursor over the annotation label, right-click the mouse button to open the context menu and select the option as appropriate. Note that once the annotation row has been deleted, the only way to restore it is by reloading the alignment. The conservation annotation is a numerical index quantifying the conservation of the physico-chemical properties for each column in the alignment. The calculation is based on a method described in the paper on the screen. The exact value of each column is displayed under the column. The maximum score is 11. The star icon highlights those columns which have a score of 11. The tooltip displays the physical chemical properties that are conserved. The presence of an exclamation mark implies the absence of the property is conserved. The consensus annotation reflects the percentage of the different residues per column. The letters on the histogram reflect the relative distribution of amino acids in each column of the alignment. Placing the cursor over the histogram opens a tooltip displaying the value. The logo can be switched on or off by right-clicking the mouse on the consensus label and selecting the Show Logo option. The sequence logo can be normalized. By default, the consensus calculation includes gaps in the column. Gaps can be ignored by selecting the Ignore Gaps in Consensus in the context menu. The quality score is calculated from the Blossom 62 scores. The conservation and quality annotations are calculated for amino acids, but not for nucleotides. For more information about these alignment-associated annotation rows, I recommend you look at the online help and the JavaView manual. In the annotation panel, JavaView is able to display four different types of annotation rows. Type 1 are annotations which relate to the alignment as a whole, such as those that open when JavaView is launched. Type 2 are annotation rows that relate to selected groups within the alignment. Type 3 are sequence-associated annotation rows. These are linked to a specific sequence within the alignment. The fourth type of annotation rows are user-defined annotations. These are manually created annotations. Annotations can either be static, where their position does not change if the alignment is modified, or dynamic, where changes in the alignment or sequence results in the annotation being updated. Note, user-defined annotations often don't auto-calculate, and it's important to bear this in mind. Annotation rows associated with a selected group can be generated by going to the Annotation drop-down menu in the Alignment window and select the Auto-Calculated Annotation submenu. Then select either Group Consensus or Group Conservation depending on what you require. Group annotation reflect the sequence variation within the particular group. These annotations can be toggled on or off. An example of sequence-associated annotation rows are those generated by the JPRED Secondary Structure Predictor. I can run JPRED predictions by going to the Web Service drop-down menu and selecting the JPRED Secondary Structure Prediction in the sub-menu. Note that these annotation rows are associated with a specific sequence. To illustrate how to create user-defined annotation rows, I will import a group of sequences that have already been aligned. The URL is on the screen and in the notes below. 
I can create an annotation row by placing the cursor over the annotation label, right-clicking the mouse to open the context menu and select Add New Row. A dialog box opens asking for the annotation name and the annotation description. If I enter the text and click OK, a new empty row appears. If I navigate to column 97 on the new annotation row, then right-click the mouse and select Label from the context menu. If I enter the text and click OK, the new annotation appears on the row. I can change its colour by right-clicking on the selection again, select Colour, pick a colour and click OK. I press Escape to view. If I select columns 80 to 84 on this annotation row, right-click the mouse and choose Sheet from the context menu, a green ribbon appears on the annotation row. I can do the same for Alpha Helix. And a red ribbon appears. Annotations can be exported by right-clicking on the text label in the annotation row and select Export Annotations in the context menu. I will select the Jow View format and select the To Text Box button. I can save this file and edit it in a text editor. First I will change its name. Then I will add some more features and save the file. When I drag the file back onto the alignment window in Jow View, it will open in the annotation panel. The format for this file is described in the Jow View Online Help documentation in the Annotation File Format entry. This can be found in the Alignment Annotation section. For more information, please visit our website at www.jowview.org. Goodbye.